that wonderful book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, if you haven't read it, was reputed to have the words Don't Panic inscribed in large friendly letters on the front cover. And it's really good advice in sailing. Try not to panic because it doesn't really do you much good. But somewhere inside the guide is another piece of advice which was expect the unexpected. And the guide noted that that really annoyed travellers on the basis that it was A, glib, and B, a contradiction in terms. However, I think it's a very, very good summary of what we're going through <laughs> at this precise moment. We were warned that getting diesel on the south and west coast of Ireland was going to be an issue, but we weren't overly worried about it because there'd be diesel at Malahide, there'd be diesel at Kilmore Quay, and, you know, we could top the boat up, there wouldn't be a problem. We also expected other places like Greystones and other marina to have diesel. As you know, when we were in Malahide, their diesel pontoon had been put away because of bad weather and you had to take the boat into the um, lifting bay, which with all the cross currents, if you're used to it, it's probably not a problem. But we did that last year and I can't say it was an enjoyable experience with all the cross currents. So we just got a jerry can at Malahide thinking, well, you know what, we can fill up further south. Um, we got further south, it turned out that Greystone's diesel pontoon wasn't in operation. Okay, we didn't expect that, but expect the unexpected. We got to Kilmore, and they have a huge big automatic pump system thing. You put your card in, and out comes diesel. Brilliant. Except it was broken. Now, that's not Kilmore's fault, and they had called the engineers, and we were waiting on an engineer coming out, but we had no timetable for it, so that meant that Kilmore was out. Um, and our diesel's getting lower and lower and lower and lower. And we're getting to the point now where really all that's slopping around in the bottom of the tank is diesel fumes. And we've got quite a bit to go. And the wind is very, very, very fluky. There is some wind here in the anchorage. Go a little bit into the bay and the wind disappears. So it must be a land breeze or a sea breeze, something like that here. Um, we don't want to go 30 miles out to sea and find that we've got no way back. That's not really our idea of having a fun time of it. There are no petrol stations in Dunmore East. The nearest one is four or five miles that way, which, well, it's not that bad, is it? Get a bus. So you expect there will be a bus. There is a bus. It doesn't run all that often, and it doesn't run past the petrol station. So once again, expect the unexpected. Get you in the neck. So your other option is to go to Waterford. Um, there's lots of petrol stations in Waterford, but you've got to take a huge flipping great jerry can quite a way on the bus and then get your way back here. So we're looking into that. We're also looking into other things. Again, we're trying to contact the local harbour master and see if there are any other local options. And we're going to maybe ask one or two of our Facebook viewers to see if they can give us a hand out with this. But I think expect the unexpected <laughs> has come to bite us on the ass, really. <laughs> we didn't expect there was going to be so many problems getting diesel before we got to the south coast or maybe just done it but there you go so it just goes to show you i think the best piece of advice in this coast is keep your diesel tank filled to the top and if you've got a spare jerry can fill it to it every opportunity because it looks like this is going to be a recurring theme so we're going to try to don't panic and <laughs> see what we can do i'll give you an update when we know better because um, when we were going down to Scaries uh, one of the um, reaping lines got caught behind the battens which are usually here and completely ripped it um, and then this is subsequently gone as well 
So I've got to try and see what I can do to repair it. But I've got the sewing machine because I had to wait for two things. One, a completely calm day. Got that. And two, enough sunlight to come in so that I can power my inverter so I can use my sewing machine. Got that. So now I've just got to fix this lot up. Well, it's boot repair day on Salty Lass. <laughs> um, yesterday worked out better in the end than I expected. <coughs> I had a few false starts with uh, Bus Erin, the bus service, but Gator kept me at it, so um, eventually we did get some diesel and it's now in the tank. But here's a few tips for you if you're in and around this area. First off, some of our followers and subscribers who live around this area said that if we were really, really, really stuck, they could come and help, but they obviously have their own lives to get on with and they have you know people arriving and things to do and they don't necessarily live here in the village. They can be quite some distance away. So it was very good of them to make the offer and we appreciated that. But we decided that we could get the bus and do it ourselves. Now, the problem is that the bus stops around here you have to know where they are and it's no good looking at a lamppost for the number 354 bus because there's nothing up a lamppost for the number 3454 bus. Um, the bus I caught said it stops at the Strand Inn. It's over there, I can see it. But what it really meant was stops on the main road somewhere close to the Strand Inn and it was about a quarter of a mile away. Um, it just happened to be the closest point to the Strand Inn and it was just a piece of grass. People stood on it and waved at the buses that came past the stop took them on. Um, the station we went to was called JB's, it's about four or five miles away. Um, we went there, I took, a, I took the, the jerry can with me, I smuggled it on the bus <laughs> in disguise in a big blue bag. Because um, I don't know if they allow diesel on the bus. I one of those things, don't see, don't tell. So I got off at JB's and um, I eventually found something on one of the Google apps that marked the bus stops as little things and it turned out that uh, the place to get on was just across so I made sure that I stood so the bus driver had plenty of time to see me. I gave him a good wave and the rest of it. It cost me five euros for the return ticket. I got on and was back here. From here in Dunmore East the place that started was just beside the harbour. So if you do, if you are here and you do need diesel you can get a number 354 bus at present. It's 2023. I'm bringing this up because the 611 bus which did this route apparently has stopped. But as of now you can go onto the harbour walk up to the top of the hill, hang around just at the uh, top of the hill and you'll see where the 354 bus comes. It paradoxically goes that way when the garage is that way but that's because it goes around the town, does a big loop, comes back and then comes past the Strand Inn on, on the main road and goes and does its thing. So it is doable, it is done. There is now extra diesel in the tank, not a vast amount but enough to give us the confidence that if we go and we get into some sort of bother We've got enough diesel to take us all the way to y'all and probably bring us back here again. So we're feeling a lot more confident about that. But today is repair the seal day. Gainer is downstairs hammering away on the machine. I've got to pop into town for one or two bits and bobs because we've stayed here a lot longer than we thought. And um, just the supplies get short. So that's what we're about today. And it's time to crack on. Well, I'm just finishing off my cell repair. Uh, which is why I've got ropes everywhere still. Uh, just doing a little bit of hand sewing. Um, I was really pleased with my inverter. Um, when I bought the inverter, one of the things I thought I'd want to do is um, use the sewing machine um, at Anchor, which I have done today. And uh, it worked really well. Had a bit of a scare at one point because I hadn't put the switch in the right position, but other than that, it was fine. <laughs> but um, one of the things I just wanted to have a little chat about was sort of um, more to do with uh, how Beverly and I are about being safe and things. Um, Beverly used to fly and um, According to most accident reports for flying, it was always three things that killed. So basically, people can cope with one thing failing, 
and they're fine with that and um but and two things yeah but three things if they've got three things rattling around in the head that's when um, failures start and um, accidents start to happen. Basically, any two systems on an aircraft can fail and you'll, you'll, you'll survive. Yeah, so any two systems on an aircraft can fail and you can survive. When the third one turns up, you're gone. You're gone. So, that's one of the reasons, though, uh, that we got the fuel. Because we probably had enough fuel to get us to Yule. But that's a dangerous word, probably. Now we know we have enough fuel to get to Yeol. We still want to sail, don't get me wrong, we still want to sail, but if the worst comes to the worst, we could motor it and we could, and we could get there. And we know that. And that means that that's really good for us. We know we can do it. Um, whereas going out and sort of like having that doubt that do you have enough fuel, not have enough fuel, etc, etc. It's just causing you to have one failure before you've even gone out. So that's why we got the fuel. Um, you know, okay, fair enough, we've been sailing with this repair for the last, um, you know, needing repaired. But once we've got the fuel, I looked at the day and there's absolutely, even in gust mode, um you know it's blue well that means there's not enough wind for our boat so i decided to get the this done and i'm really pleased that i have because it's just keeping my boat as well maintained as i can you know okay fair enough um you know, we're not necessarily the best uh, maintainers in the world. This uh, sail repair is a bit shoddy. But we have a standing rule on this boat. If they don't like it, they can go off the boat. <laughs> as long as we think it's good enough, that's good enough for us. Oh, God. But, no, we try and keep salty last because we don't want... We want it to be as good as we can. absolutely wrecked but the sail is up um, we use a what's called a running bowling now on our reefing lines and it really does help it helps um, in the fact that it's much easier to undo uh, we had an issue we tested the sail and we realized that we've got one of our reefs wrong so it was really easy just to undo it and put set it right so these running bowlings are a much better idea so whichever subscriber it was who said suggested that uh, thank you for that because it really has helped um i've still got the cockpit to tidy but you know what i'm really looking forward to a nice meal and a bit of a relax. It's been one of those busy, busy days. <laughs>